when I, uh, w much later, I was uh, brought to Georgia Tech to have a conference, kind of a debate with other physicists. These are very well-known physicists, highly regarded, um, older people that had their uh, students there. And we were talking about things. Uh, some of the students were there. They came in and out. They, they, we were, you know, looking at equations. We had all this stuff on the on the big wall there on on the back on the blackboard. And um, I showed up with this book. This is the only book I had with me. I had a, maybe another few, but that was my main book. It's called Gravitation. It's a classical book about relativistic equations. It's written by Messner, Thorne, and Wheeler. Those are legends of physics. And it's a brick, you can see. And that's why it's called gravitation. When you pick it up, you know everything you need to know about gravity. <laughs> and I, you know, I was going through all the equations and I could see that the physicists were starting to get upset with me. You know, they, I was, you know, kind of going through, you know, the way they think of the universal uh, dynamics and the universal expansion and all this. And, uh, and I finally said, okay, if I understand your model right, and I opened gravitation on page 719, and I said, if this is correct, then the universe is something like this, which they show you uh, after about a thousand equations. Uh, the model for our universe is a balloon with pennies glued to it. So what you do is you take a balloon, you take a bunch of pennies and a glue gun. And you glue the penny to the balloon, and the pennies represent galaxies. And then as the balloon inflates, the galaxies move away from each other, generating the universal expansion we observe with the Hubble it's called the Hubble constant, or the Hubble expansion, and is observed by various modalities, including uh, telescopes. So I'm going through this with them, and you know, you got to realize these guys are very accomplished physicists, and you know, they're looking at me going, oh my God. This is like kindergarten stuff, you know, if you don't know this stuff, you should go back home and study a little more before you waste our time. <laughs> and so I was like, well, you know, what I want to know is where is the equation, because I really looked through all your stuff, and where is the equation for this guy? <laughs> and you know, the room became quiet. <laughs> and I was saying, well, you know, um, this is definitely a component of the dynamics that are going on. And, and, I, and I said, if you keep drawing, you know, if you don't stop at the face, and you keep drawing the rest of the guy, you'll notice that when the balloon expands, the lungs contract for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction first law of physics that hurt <laughs> everybody had a blank look on their face and the room became so quiet you could hear a pin drop. And I could see my dear friend and sponsor across the room going, oh, you're doing damage. <laughs> <laughs> kind of obvious. Completely, completely missed. Obviously, if the universe expands, then something is contracting. And that 
dynamic of expansion would be a feedback, right? Expand, contract, expand, contract. And it would have a very specific topological structure, meaning it would look in a very specific way, it would have very specific dynamics for things to be able to expand and then contract and so on. So, you know, when you think about it, and I was thinking about it for years, if you radiate, if you look at the universe, you find that everything in the universe radiates. What does it radiate in? In the vacuum. The vacuum of space. Well then, the vacuum cannot be thought of as empty, can it? Because no energy is lost, no energy is given. So if all the suns, all the stars, all the galaxies, all the black holes, everything we see radiates into the vacuum, then the vacuum must be full. Full of energy. And it was clear to me that then the vacuum must be the contractive side of the event horizon, the contractive side of the structure of reality. The part we don't see. Why? Because it's contracting towards infinity, moving away from us. It appears to us as vacuum. So I was puzzled about that, and I remembered my first class of physics. 